Okay, in this video, I'm going to talk about what are called dynamic linked libraries, or .dll files. Now, if you're unfamiliar with DLLs, they are a very powerful uh, part of your software development. They make your code very easy to understand. They make it very reusable. Basically, libraries of code that you can you reuse over and over. It's I made the analogy before. It's like going into a real library in the real world and grabbing the book you need whenever you need it, and it's always there and always available. The analogy I made was that of a supervisor with some assistance. And in this case, we've got three assistants that, that help the supervisor do special tasks. I've got an adder guy, that who somebody who adds numbers, a multiplier guy who multiplies, and a subtractor guy. So basically, the supervisor, who is you developing your main software code, he hands off a task to each of these uh, assistants, and they go off and do their job. And when they're done, they return a value to the uh, the main software. And in this case, you can see some C-sharp code I put in here for each of these functions, an adder, uh, multiplier, and subtractor functions. A DLL is basically taking those functions and compiling them so that you can you reuse them uh, whenever you need to. And you can not only use simple functions, but you can expand that to do just about anything you need to do, anything that you do regularly, you repeat it a lot, or things that are really kind of not intuitive and kind of hard to remember. How did I do that? I forget the exact syntax and everything else. You can package that up in a DLL, and whenever you need it, all you have to do is refer to that DLL, refer to the methods or functions inside that DLL, and they will do your work for you. You just pass them parameters, and they'll send you back the answer. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to actually build a dynamic link library. And first step is to design and to see exactly what we're going to do. So here I've got a simple diagram. Um, we're going to make use of the Microsoft.NET framework. There are many dynamic link libraries existing in the .NET framework that you can merely refer to and use all the functionality in those DLLs. The one we're going to access is called system.speech, and it is a dyna dynamic link library just like what we're going to build here. And there are two components to system.speech. There's a speech recognition and a speech synthesis library. We're going to take advantage of the speech synthesis library. And particularly, we're going to use a class called the speech synthesizer. And basically, you feed some text to this speech synthesizer component, and it sends it out your speakers, your headphone. What we're going to do is we're going to have a main application, which is very small, very simple. Here, I've named it your app with the entry point static void main. And all this main application is going to do is generate some text that we want to send out to the speech synthesizer and send it out to speakers. And the DLL we're going to design is kind of an interface between our main app and the speech synthesizer um, class. And all this DLL is going to do is act like an assistant to us and take our message, which is going to be a string. We're going to send the string message, and it's going to package it up in the right format and send it to the speech synthesizer. Honestly, we, we, we probably don't really need a DLL for this, but I just want to show it a simple way to do it. And that the other reason why you might want to do a dynamic link library is, in this case, um, there's a, an aspect or two of interacting with the speech synthesizer that's kind of counterintuitive. So in this case, you might want to do a DLL because you don't want to, every, every time you send something out to the speech synthesizer, you don't want to remember the format and the, what method you use and that kind of thing. They're kind of counterintuitive. So we're just going to build a very simple uh, DLL that takes a message, sends it out to the speech synthesizer in the correct format. Now, aside from just sending a string message from our main app, there are some other things you can do based on the functionality of the speech synthesizer. You can also send it a rate. And the rate is a integer, which is a negative or positive number that defines how fast the voice in the speech synthesizer will speak. 
So if it's a negative number, it's going to be slower than normal. If it's a positive number, it will be uh, speak faster than normal. The other thing you can define is a voice gender. Now, in Windows 10, it the system.speech provides two built-in voices. One is a male, one is a female, and you can define whether you want a male or a female to speak, um, do your speech synthesis. And honestly, this voice gender, the setup of this, the configuration so that the speech synthesizer will work is a little bit counterintuitive, which is one reason why you might want to do this. But the Say Stuff DLL will handle all that, so we don't have to worry about it. So now we pretty much know how we're going to define this. This is a simple object with the inputs and outputs, and all we have is an input and one output. And uh, now we can start uh, developing a code to do this uh, DLL. So we'll jump into Microsoft Visual Studio, File, New, Project. Now a DLL, Dynamic Link Library, is a class library. Basically a library comprised of a single class or subclasses in which you put your properties and methods and subclasses to do the functions you want it to perform. So you select Class Library, Visual C Sharp, and we're going to name it as Say Stuff DLL. Hit OK. And now you can see we have the basic framework for a dynamic link library. You have the using statements. We have our namespace, which is Say Stuff DLL. And we have a single public class. Now, notice that it is a public class. And the reason it's public is because we're going to need to access this class in other classes and from our main software. So it needs to be a public class. Now, the first thing we want to do, instead of naming it class one, we'll name it something that makes a little bit more sense. Right click on that, rename, and we'll call it, let's say, talk. Now, we can also change it over in the Solution Explorer. Right click, rename, talk. We're going to need to add a reference to that .NET framework library. So we will go into, uh, we will right click on reference, say add reference, go to assemblies, and scroll down until we see system.speech. And here you go, system.speech, make sure you click on this to select it, hit OK, and we have now added that reference to the system.speech DLL. And if you click on that, the new system.speech DLL, you go down here and see under description, it is indeed a DLL. So we are building a DLL that accesses a .NET DLL. Okay, so we have made that reference to a DLL, and we also need to make a using statement, system dot speech dot Synthesis, and you can see there are already, or there are two additional DLLs inside that system.speech. There's audio format and speech recognition, but we're going to use synthesis. So we select that, and we are now referencing the system.speech.synthesis namespace. So since we know that this um, system.speech.synthesis uh, is a class, we're going to have to instantiate a new speech synthesizer. It's called Speech Synthesizer, and we can select that. And we're going to name it Synth equals New Speech Synthesizer. So now we're all set to develop a method that will take our text and send it out to this new speech synthesizer. So we'll say public void, and let's call it uh, the method, we'll call it say it. Okay, and as input, we said we're going to use a string, and we'll call it message. So we'll pass in our string message. We also said we can pass in a rate 
to tell it how fast to say your, the message. And we said it's an integer, it's a, it's a positive or negative number, and we'll call that rate. Okay, so we do our curly brackets. We will say synth dot rate rate. Now, one of the counterintuitive or less intuitive parts of this speed synthesizer um, is that if you want to select a voice gender, you have to use what's called select voice by hints. And I won't go into detail on why, but this is a good example of why even you're doing something fairly simple, but it's not intuitive. So the next time you want to do it, you'll, you'll have to remember you need to use select voice by hints. What we'll do is we will say synth select voice by hints and we'll select voice gender and you can see here voice gender is a property and we will set it to female so um now that we've got the race and the, the rate and the gender uh, all set all we need to do is to speak the message so the method to do that is synth dot speak And oops, and we speak the message. So now that we've written our code uh, to compile this and make a DLL out of it, we go to build, build solution, and you have just generated a DLL. And if you want to check that, just right click on this tab and go to Open Containing Folder and you'll see your uh, DLL. So now the next step is we'll go and we'll write our main uh, application. So we'll jump into Microsoft Visual Studio, File, New, Project. Instead of Class Library, we will choose Console Application. And we will name it Speak App. Hit OK. And now we have the regular main application uh, named Speak App. So the first thing we know we have to do is we're going to have to reference the DLL that we generated. So we'll go into References, right-click, Add Reference, and we will search for our DLL. And here we have, we have recent DLL, so we'll just select that. And now we are referenced over here. We have Say Stuff DLL. <clears throat> so we will use that using Say Stuff DLL. So the first thing we're going to do is remember that the class that we renamed in that DLL was Talk. It started out with Class 1, if you recall, and now it is Talk. So that is the main class that we're going to use. So since we're going to use that class, we have to instantiate a new uh, object from that class. So there's a new talk, and let's call it new message equals new talk. Okay, so now we've instantiated a new object. And really, now all we have to do is access the say it method, if you recall. So new, new message dot say it. And we just enter the string. Let's say, hey, dude, what's up? And that's the message we're going to send. And recall, we also were going to add a rate. So let's choose minus 2 as the rate. So now we are pretty much all set. Um, we can then do a console.readline. Okay, so now it looks like we're all set. We can um, press start and see if this works. Hey dude, what's up? Oh my god. 
I'm really impressed at your DLL file, that's like totally awesome, are you serious? That's so cool you can do that, here's my number, call me, okay? Okay, so now you got your DLL and you can add to this a whole library of functions just like this and um, you can just save it and use it whenever you need it. So I hope that helps. Um, take care. Have a good day.